Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to another Final Fantasy Prefixes video. And we've got Esther here to review. So, first of all, let's let's have a separate discussion about her vision card. And let's review that first for you guys. So, is her vision card premium? No. <laughs> the 75% LB damage at the end is not necessary because her STMR and her passives give her nearly enough to, to, to cap it already. So why does she need 75% more? I don't know. I guess for everybody else who would like to use it in the future. But LB damage is one of the easiest things to cap it in these days because they usually have a decent amount. So missing 500 flat attack on that vision card really hurts. Really hurts. I would say it's not worth the premium vision card. It's definitely not amazing. So that's my review on that. Anyways. Her STMR is quite good and there's more little burst damage and 500 flat attack so that's pretty much mandatory because she doesn't have a whole lot. So on both sides 500% cap, 200% LB damage that's where so with, with her STMR she has 275 and 50% all killers but it's decent for now but um, there are certain units in the, in the future that have way more all killers but we'll see. Anyways in the base form, 300% TDH, many ways to fill LB gauge, 60% lightning amp on a cooldown, 120% demon machine stone and reaper killer buffs on a cooldown, and on a grandest that can be recharged, 175% 175 times mod boost for the LB, only LB, it's worded differently on the wiki but it's only for LB guys. And the LB is a 350% attack buff, 3 charges for Magnus, 100% LB damage field effect, and also 200 times to 375 times with Magnus physical damage, non-elemental, so it's decent at least. Uh, we'll be talking about that shortly. In the Brave Shift form, 400% TDH for defense, defense TDH, the print of physical cover, she has several physical covers. And also on a provoke skill, she has 75% general mitigation, 75% physical mitigation against Demon Stone and Reaper. Decent. But although there really isn't much else worth mentioning in the base form, other than she has some morale, she has a morale HP barrier, just like just like uh, Maeve has. So okay, so there there are a lot of problems when it comes to a premium unit, and it comes to Esther. First of all. No morale based abilities in the in the base form at all. Her LB has nothing to do with morale, which in, in a sense you could think, hey, now I can just use it and it'll be strong, you know, pretty much at all times when I'm using the Magnus. It'll be strong almost at all times. But at the same time, she's not scaling even stronger with other Clash of Wills units. And it's already been, I've already saw the numbers and she's much weaker than uh, Clash of Wills units in Clash of Wills at, you know, a higher morale percentage. So she's not beating well, a lot of like like uh, Tartan and Sky and all those kind of units at a high morale percentage, I believe. And outside of Clash of Wills, she's beaten by certain units like Graf and other un other units like that in that in that tier. So that's one thing. And there's another thing. And she is not a finisher. She is not a finisher. She has extreme Nova frames. And her LB got her LB cost a lot. She has no, uh, what is it, wandering spirit or something like that, where it gives her LB full LB gauge at the start of the turn. She doesn't have that at EX two. She does not have that. Instead, instead she has LB damage boost and LB fill rate. I mean, that's not as good as filling your LB gauge at the start of the turn, at the start of the battle. So extreme low frames, very very rare. She has almost no partners inside Clash Wheels other than maybe Fina. But like, you're bringing Fina just for that, really. I guess her base form is okay. Like you, in Clash Wheels, you would you would probably would shift. And I guess you would do a uh, chaining that turn and then you can shift her back if she has, in I don't know if she has infinite turns or not. I, I didn't really look at her all that much or remember. So. Maybe that's a possibility because otherwise your only other partner is Rain, and <laughs> no, because he's fire based. I mean, I guess if you wanted to just go fire with her, but more often than not you're probably gonna be doing lightning. So 
I don't understand why they made her extreme overframes. They could have just done 27 hits. That probably would have been a lot more relevant. There was a lot more units that have 27 hits. I would recommend them not to do 24 because yeah, it would, would work really well with uh, Dorgan. But 24 hits are being phased out on the JP version. Uh, 27 hits are definitely the meta right now and extreme overframes are definitely not the meta on either version at all at all extreme nova frames almost never existed in this game and that's the reason why they're giving out a free one in the story event and also the reason why they give out a she has an ability that gives extreme over frames to, to one ally but it's not lb based so only two morale based abilities in the break shift form and only one of them fills the uh, morale gauge and if the enemy isn't using lightning the electromagnetic shield becomes pretty weak in terms of mitigation and stuff like that so eh. and she can't she can't imbue lightning to the enemy either so eh. eh. she's not as strong as everybody maybe thought that she was going to be she's still strong for sure but premium tag worthy no i have to say no and and one of the reasons for that is because she cannot use tyvis's stmr because her setup for her uh, her Magnus does not time correctly with the Tyvus STMR, so you can't use them both at the same time. They they they, they technically they can stack, but because they're different sources, but you can't use them at the same time because it's not the same. You, you just it, it's not possible. So her vision card really isn't that good. Her STMR is really really only good for herself. So, why is she premium? She has almost no morale based abilities at all. For being technically a Clash of Wills unit because she's coming out in the next Clash of Wills. Uh, I don't, I don't understand why they made her like this. And there's no, there's not going to be a, obviously a nerf situation. She doesn't need to be nerfed. She needs, she, she needs some changes in terms of buffs. Because if the LB in the brave base form had morale base tied to it uh having a little, a little stronger maybe like 390 400 times in clash wills then i think she'd be a lot better but at the same time she's still extreme over frames i understand that her bait her original five star form had extreme over frames but there's a point where you need to say hey extreme over frames is almost never used it hasn't been used in a long time so why are we putting this on our newest unit I don't, I don't understand. So, there's very limited partners for extreme overframes. In fact, why don't I do some research right now? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find out, guys. I'm going to find out for you guys. So, the only options you have, and for some reason the uh, builder site doesn't include all of them, because I know some of them exist, and I looked at them. Christine, which is ice magic damage. Elena, which is hybrid damage. Rain's brave shift form. And also, Blue Mage Fina's Brave Shift form. I believe those are all it. I believe those are it. So, but that being said, you don't have a lot of partners for LB uh, Extreme Overframes. And I think Blue Mage Fina is probably going to be your best bet. Because at least she has a support kit and stuff like that she could do, I suppose. That's really it. So, all in all, she's not worth the premium tag. She, she would be really good as a... As, if she was not a premium unit, she would be really good. She'd be getting a pretty high score, but since she's under the scrutiny of being a premium unit compared to Sephiroth, Orin, not Yuna, and you know stuff like that, and and stuff in the future like Dark Rain, Cl Clash, uh, or Knights of Grand Shelt, whatever you may think of them, uh, those are premium units. Tyvus, Tyvus is a premium. Unit. You can you said right now. Look at his vision card, really good. Uh, look at her vision card, bland, mediocre, in my opinion. So, gonna have to give her a low score. I don't. I don't it's, it's because she's in, in a premium banner. She's expected to be a little, oof, a little higher up, and there's a lot of limitations on her. So I'm gonna go 8.5. She's not getting a nine. She cannot reach a nine. If she was not a premium unit, she'd be getting a nine, most likely, or 9.5. But since she's premium. I have a lot more expectations of a premium unit than I do of a non for you guys. 
Remember, 60k pity. 60k pity for her. Is this worth this is not worth 60k pity? No. So hopefully they're, they're not gonna change her. But I really hope that they do. I hope that they change her in some way. Hopefully they change that vi vision card. It is not worth pulling for. It is not bait. This is definitely not worth bait. The other the first Vision card with the the great sword and peril and everything on it that has uh, Tullian's picture on it. That was bait. This is not. So 8.5 for Esther. That might be controversial from some of you, but keep in mind she's premium. She's missing a whole lot of things, and also not. She'll be good in Clash Rules, but like, where's the where's the morale stuff? Where's the morale stuff? That's what I'm thinking. Overall, everything else. Okay, here's the tier list of the things that are concerning to me. No morale stuff. Number one. Number two, extreme overframes. So, it, she can have extreme overframes. There, there are ways around that. There are Fina. Fina, you could bring Fina for that. But no morale stuff is is really detrimental to her entirely. So, if you, if you want to take away from anything from that, that's what I'm, that's what I'm complaining about, I suppose, the most. And so... Yeah, 8.5 guys. Thank you guys very much for watching. Appreciate you. If you have any criticism of this review, let me know in the comment section down below. If I was wrong in anything, let me know that in the comment section down below. I'm sure some people will tell me I missed something. Even though I, I made sure to look at the kit very, very closely with a magnifying glass. Not not literally, but you know what I mean. Like, I'm very, very uh, scanning everything. So, I guess I should, have had, I should have said this at the very beginning, by the way. I only put in things that are really interesting. Uh, in, the, in the pros and, and cons and things like that. So her, you'll notice that I didn't mention her Brave Shift LB at all because it's really just uh, whatever. So that's it, guys. 8.5. Thank you guys for, for thank, thank you for watching. Sorry about that. Uh, make sure to like the video. Make sure to subscribe if you're new around here because I do reviews on all the units that come out on the global and the GP version. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.